thank you very much. Um, today I will talk about uh, representing geometric operators. And the motivation behind this work is that we want to take some geometric entity. And we, at some times, we don't want the exact uh, equation, but we rather want to have some operator that we can work with. And the idea behind this is that operators can be manipulated. Um, and we will usually manipulate them with standard uh, linear algebra tools. Now, through this representation, a complex task becomes simpler. And we will see examples for this in a couple of slides. So basically, the, the motivation is a question of representation. Okay? We, at some times, we, we would like to represent um, geometric entities um, in other ways that will help us. So let's look on a toy example. So in this example, I have this airplane here, and this is basically a 2D vector. And we want to talk about a 2D rotation uh, along some axis by some angle theta. And we all know that the equation for this rotation is basically what is written here, um, which maps the coordinates x, y to those x, y tag. Now, if we rearrange the quantities, we can construct this rotation matrix R. And this is basically the same as we had it in the previous slides. But now we have an operator. And what we can do, for example, with this operator is that if we have two such rotation matrices, R1 and R2, corresponding to rotations by theta1 and theta2, we, for example, can simply compose these matrices, basically matrix uh, multiplication, in order to rotate by theta1 plus theta2. OK, so this is nice. But another thing that we can do, we can easily find the, um, um, the axis of rotation by computing the um, eigenvector of this matrix. And this is because R multiplied by V is some scalar and multiplied by v. OK, so let's see a recipe. Find some geometric um, operation that you would like to represent, and try to characterize it either through a direct equation, as we had in the rotation, or in indirect ways. And we will see an example in a, in a slide. And since we usually work with objects which are infinite dimensions, we can't really represent them because we don't have, like in full, because we don't have uh, so much computing power. So we will basically need to find some bases. And here I talk about multiscale bases. And what I mean by multiscale is that we need to have some notion of order of the basis vector. So imagine that you have a domain. And let's say that we want to have a basis for all the functions on this domain. Now, a multiscale in this setting would mean that we want the smooth function to appear first and the noisy functions to appear at the end. And finally, you, we can construct the geometric oper operator that we have either by um, uh, directly using the equation that we have or using some uh, finite element methods. OK, so let's see some elaborate uh, example. And in this example, what we would like to, to do is to represent tangent vector field on surfaces. So M here is basically a shell, no volume. And a tangent vector field is an assignment of a tangent vector at each point of M. So the right image here is basically another visualization of the vector field, which should give us the notion of the flow of the vector field. Um, so we don't really get. Um, what is the exact direction, right? We don't know if the vector field goes up or down, but we do get some notion of direction. And <clears throat> it turns out that we can characterize tangent vector fields um, through their operations on functions. So what we see here is that V can be characterized through the directional derivative um, with the 
a gradient of the function. So this is a pointwise uh, dot product, and um, this is an if and only if, which means that if we get a, a vector field, we can construct its operator dv and vice versa. And in some graphic uh, visualization, if we have this vector field here, it operates on some function and it gives back uh, its directional derivative. Okay, so, right, so we said that we need to find some basis, some multi-scale basis, and in the last talk, um, the graph Laplacian was men mentioned. So, for example, if we take some domain and, and we define the graph Laplacian, the eigenfunctions of the, the graph Laplacians are basically oscillations of sine and cosine, and um, they give a multi-scale basis for this domain. The eigenfunctions of the Laplace Beltrami are very much uh, similar, but on surfaces. So this is the basis that we will use, and we can decompose each function to this set of scalars, um, prime f, multiplied by the eigenfunctions that we have on this ellipsoid, for example. Okay, finally we can uh, construct this operator, and basically what we have is that we have this matrix D, that maps the uh, vector of coefficients f to its uh, directional derivative. Now, notice that all of the uh, vector fields that we saw in the previous slides can be basically represented using a very small matrix. So this is, a, for example, a 20 by 20 matrix, and it is enough to represent those vector fields sort of regardless uh, on how many vertices and faces that we have on the mesh. Okay. So one of the so now we have an operator, and I told you th that we can man manipulate those operators. So for example, we can easily get a discrete version of the flow of the vector field. So right, we have a we have a vector field, and the flow of the vector field is a self map, um, mapping each point of the surface to the surface. And intuitively, the flow of a vector field is, if we consider only one point here, is that we travel along the flow lines of the vector field for some time t. And if we do this for any point on the surface, we will get a self-map. Now, in our setting, if we take this operator dv and uh, simply takes the matrix ex exponential of this uh, operator multiplied by uh, the time parameter, we will get a discrete version of the flow of the vector field. Now, notice that this operator maps functions to functions, so it's not a standard map, but it's actually a functional map, uh, and a notion that was introduced in SIGGRAPH 2012 by, by Max of Janikov and et al., and we have this relation between uh, tangent vector fields and maps through this uh, functional representation. Okay, and we saw in, this, in the paper um, some applications that we can do with the settings, but in particular, I would like to show um, an application uh, which uh, relates to function advection or flowing a function. So in this problem, what we have is a fixed vector field V and some initial function F T zero. And what we would like to do is basically basically um, flow this function for some time. So imagine that we are on this point on the surface, and we have the value, and we again flow along the flow lines of the vector field, and where we stop, we assign the value that we have. So in our setting, it, it is basically representing the operator, represent the vector field through the operator, and taking the matrix exponential and multiply um, the initial function that we have. So here you can see the results for different time, uh, T1 and T2. Now, this is nice, right? And you can say, you can ask at this point, okay, but other than decorating my vases at home, can we actually uh, do something um, more interesting with this? So it turns out that this operator, our operator, actually appears in the equations that uh, governs the motion of incompressible fluid. And, um, and this is the Euler equations, appears in the vorticity formulation, and what we constructed is a variational time integration schemes that works nicely on surfaces. And I will finish with just showing 
a simulation that we had So here what you see is a Karman vortex, a von Karman vortex street on a surface which we continuously inject vorticity and uh, basically simulate uh, the equations. Um, okay, so to conclude, um, we believe that there are many geometric operators that uh, just wait to be con constructed and we are very enthusiastic about uh, this um, um, line of work. Thank you. Thank you.